This morning, we're holding a hearing on the nominations of two individuals the committee knows well, but important that we get them into their continued role. I'm pleased to welcome Jennifer Hamadi, the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, who has been nominated for a five-year term, and Patrick Fuchs, who has been renominated for a five-year term on the Service Transportation Board. Chair Hamadi has guided the NTSB through some of the most high-profile transportation accidents this nation has seen in recent memory, including the East Palestine derailment, the Alaska Airlines door plug accident, and now the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse, which claimed the lives of six individuals and closed the port of Baltimore, causing significant disruption to our national freight network. I'm so sorry for the loss of lives that occurred at the bridge and a constant reminder of who's built our nation the hardworking men and women who take these risks and do this job, and uh, we mourn their loss and give our prayers to their family. Uh, she has led this investigation uh, with independence and integrity to discover the factors that are so important to not have history repeat itself, and all the while continuing to improve the structure at the NTSB. Under her leadership, the agency has eliminated a backlog of 442 overdue investigation reports, worked to ensure the agency has the resources needed to adapt to emerging technologies. And the committee has one example marked up the FAA bill, including robust NTSB recommendations. That's, I believe, how the system is supposed to work. The NTSB, clearly a watchdog, doing the hard, hard, hard investigative work reminding us what else needs to be improved in the system. The Senate bill requires the FAA to finalize the 25-hour cockpit recording rule. That is clear as it can be from you, Chair Hamadi, the necessary recordings that help you on your investigation. As we know, the cockpit recording in the Alaska Airlines incident was overwritten, uh, complicating your investigation. So we are working hard with our House colleagues to get an agreement and send the FAA bill to the President's desk. I also want today to focus on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I commend the brave members of the United States Coast Guard, first responders who quickly conducted search and rescue efforts, and thanks to President Biden and Army Corps of Engineers to tirelessly work with reopening the Port of Baltimore, the Department of Transportation has already made $60 million available to the state to aid in the rebuilding efforts, but we know much more is needed. So we stand ready to assist the people of Maryland and our important trade and transportation infrastructure that our economy counts on, and look forward to hearing from you any updates on that investigation this morning. Uh, Mr. Hughes, a former Commerce Committee staffer for Senator Thune, so it's great to have you back before the committee being out there. I wonder if you remember all the questions you wrote for members before. <laughs> we should dig some up. <laughs> but thank you so much for your, <laughs> your continued uh, work uh, with the board through the COVID-19 pandemic, which we saw uh, historic issues related to rail service. And following the East Palestine derailment, the committee found from 2017 to 2021, the Class 1 railroads infrastructure investment were cut by 25% and employees cut by 22% while the incident of accidents increased 14%. So I'm concerned about how we guarantee rail safety for the future and as a state in an economy that uh, let's just say is very Pacific focused a lot more volume is uh, Midwest products, all just a throughput for our state. So we want the rail to work and work effectively and with resiliency. So I look forward to hearing from you about how we do that. Um, and now I'll turn to Ranking Member Cruz for his opening statement. 